I like going hunting, just me, my hound, and my gun. Chasing them deer, rabbit, and squirrel, now that's my kind of fun. I like going fishing too, I'll go on any whim. Looking for the big bass, the crappie, and the brim. Give me a wide open field to walk through. Give me an ocean so deep. I want to ride the longest river in the world, or maybe climb the highest mountain peak. Folks, we're over on beautiful Logan Martin Lake. Uh, that's kind of east of Birmingham by the Ayers Drive. And it's part of the Coosa chain. And some of the finest fishing is Logan Martin here and Neely Henry up above it and Lay and Mitchell right on down. Some of the finest fishing waters there are in a, anywhere in the state of Alabama. And we're over at Clear Creek Marina. At, uh, we put in there at the harbor store there. And uh, I got Mr. Uh, uh, Willard Isbell, and uh, the folks around here will, will tell you that Willard's probably one of as good a crappie fisherman as he is on this lake. He's won a lot of crappie tournaments, and he really studies the fish. He knows where they're at and how to get at them, and uh, we have we picked a real lovely day today, and I'm looking forward to getting out there and uh, letting Willard's got a lot of little techniques that uh, if you'll kind of watch him and listen to him like I'm going to be doing, it'll increase your fishing productivity and your fun on these great lakes here in Alabama. Uh, Willard, which way are we going to go today and wh what's your plans for us? Well, we're going to go right out here to the harbor, which is behind me, go right out and go up in Clear Creek. This is just a uh, landing right here and we've got to go out in the river to get up in the creek. And we're going to go up there and try to catch one where I won that tournament over there about a couple of weeks ago. Okay, now you took some pretty big crappies out here, hadn't you? Well, so far about two and a half. Two and a half. But you get lots of them though, don't you? Well, <laughs> when they're there, you do. <laughs> All right, let's crank it up and go see what we can do. All right. That's a little head we want you to try right there. All right. Now tell me about this little head right here, Willie. Well, it's just a, it's real small there, and what it's for is we want it to get down in them limbs where you can just kind of jig it up and down in there. Uh-huh. And uh, if you hang as small as the head is, so you can pull it loose a lot of times. If it had a heavier head, uh -huh. it just hang right up. Sometimes you can get that one loose. I see. In other words, this little burr back here is to hold your, hold your hold grub little on. grub on it. All right, we're going to just use a regular curly tail grub. Yeah, we're right? going to use when they start out with this, you know, just, this is a transparent green. Okay. I always take that thing and get back there to the second little knob on it. Okay. Just pinch that off and throw it in the water. All right. Kind of smooth it up if you can. All right. All right. Show me how you're going to thread it okay. on there. You always want this little curly tail up, you know. Okay. Okay, just thread that right there all the way back till you get to that last little ridge in the grub. Just bring it on through. Yeah, and then just push it up there all the way to the head. Uh-huh. See, that makes a little fat-looking little minute there. Yeah, that's a, that's a good-looking look thing like that. And that's the way you do your, your grub. Now, what about you use some... You use some uh, uh, jigs too, don't you? Oh yeah, we got plenty of jigs. All right, right that's here. why we're sitting still. Wh uh, which jig would we be apt to use today? Well, I think one, uh, we're gonna start off one that's got a red head on it with white skirts. Okay. All right, now why are we gonna do that? Well, it's the time of year that uh, they'll go for that red right now. In other words, that head has a lot to do with a biting, don't it? Well. When you pull him up, he looked like he got a strawberry in his mouth. There you go. <laughs> now, Willard, you have you have probably done as much experiment with colors on jig heads. A lot of people don't seem to think it makes any difference, but you, you couldn't prove it by you, could you? Well, I tell you what, uh, for 
my part of the fishing. The colors is all of it. Is that right? All right, give me a little, give me a little rundown. You say we want, we want red heads today, right? Well, we're gonna start with that. Start with reds. Yeah. We. What's your normal pattern? To start with red this time of year? Well, right this particular time, yes. Okay. And then what will we go to? Well, I like to try black and white, yellow and black. Mm. Might even go to some purple. <laughs> I noticed you had some purple. Uh, let's do this before we get going here. I'd like to let the folks see exactly how it is. Is this your main box right here? Well, this one right under it there. All right, let me, let me get in here. I'm gonna let, get a little light on this and let you show them how neat you package your little jigs up there. All right. Now, now Willard does a whole lot better job of keeping his stuff straight than I do. Now show them how, how you do that now, Willard. Uh, that little red here with the white skirt on it, that's the one I was talking about right there. Now tell them what you, why you got them in these little containers like that. Well, it preserves them. If I make more than what I need, these are good for next year or whatever. And it don't, they don't get all messed up, do they? Now this is a polyethylene bag, and you roll it up just like a cigarette paper and just put it in there and staple each end of it. See how stiff it is? Uh, and it keeps and it, them hairs laying right too. It keeps too, them straight in there and it's just like just preserving something. Uh-huh. And then you got there's your red headed one and here's one of your yellow ones. Uh oh, that's the, a chartreuse. Chartreuse thing. and white, right? Right. And so you you've got your system laid out here in your box and you just when you when something ain't happen like you want it to, you just go to I the I just go to the box. Go and just move around till you find a winning combination, right? Right. It, does it ever hold consistent for a while, or uh, is it erratic, depending on the weather and all? Well, you know, like most of the time, your basic colors is yellow and white. But when uh, you can't get them to hit yellow and white, then you can try some of these colors and they'll work. I see. Okay, well, let's do it to them. Now, now, Willard, I've been with you before fishing, and you got 17-pound test on there, isn't that right? No, uh, it's 14, really. 14. Well, yeah. one time you had 17. Yeah, that's when, when we was a Got there in the cold better. weather. And I want you to explain to folks how you can take a little old tiny jig like that on a casting reel now. Show them your stroke, because he can throw that thing with a casting reel better than well, I can with four we, pound We got the wind against us now. All right, well tell them, tell them how you do it now so they can watch your style. Well, you're not really throwing a jig. You drop that thing down there about a couple feet there like that. Sort of like a fly rod, right? Yeah, and really what you try and do is throw the line more so than throw the jig. Okay, now show them how you do that. All right. In other words, you just Come way on back and just lob the yeah, whole thing. That's what I say. You're just throwing the line. If you try to throw the jig, you won't get it out of the boat. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you, I've sat in the boat here with you and, and using light line and open face reel, and you throw that thing 20 foot further than I can possibly reach with that open face reel. Did you lock your anchor in? Yeah, I did now. <laughs> All right. I went right over. That's all right. Just, That's all right. That doesn't matter because... Uh, you're going in there to 45 is what you're saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to come off that ledge there at an angle. And I was talking and missed that one. Did you? <laughs> so you had a hit then? Yeah. Now, now Willard... See how uh, that hair is all wadded up there? Uh-huh. Now, now, coming back and retrieving, what kind of retrieve do you bring back on these croppers? Well, I just kind of jig it along a little bit, you know, and uh, just kind of jig it and let it fall, jig it and let it fall. Okay, I want to watch that stroke now. All right. All right, talk to me now. All right, now what I'm doing, I'm letting it get to the bottom right now. Okay. And just as soon as it hits the bottom, like that, I just pick it up and jig it a little bit. Just kind of, you know, just more or less wave at, hmm, that was the limb, man. Uh-oh. Huh? That's another hit. Let me give this jig just a little bit of a haircut. All right, now explain to him what you do with that now. Well, this long tail is making him hit it. I'm going to have to cut this tail off just a little bit to catch him. <laughs> I see. 
In other words, that entices yeah. him. Yeah. But yeah. somewhere between enticing him and get him up to the hook is what you want, right? Yeah. See, now I took about a quarter of an inch off that thing. Uh -huh. Made it a little bit more blunt. Uh-huh. Let's see what happens this time. All right. That's two hits right straight in a row there now. Got a little bit of overrun there. Okay. Now you're watching your line now, aren't you, Willard? Yeah, I'm letting it settle in now. I didn't put it back in the same spot or either. I scared him out of there. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, Willard, I notice you use grubs and jigs. Why, uh, why do you, when do you use one and when do you use the other? Well, I use that grub, you know, just more or less to find the fish. And then I use that uh, jig to settle in on them in, you know, just you catch more with a jig than you can with a grub the way I fish. Uh-huh. Now, how do you find them with a grub? Well, I just normally go down the bank with a trolling motor. Uh huh. And just throwing it in at the bank and around brush and you let know, it kind of troll it around a little bit. Yeah. And once I ever catch one on it, then I just back off out there and tie my jig on. I see. So you use them in combination. Yeah. That little curly tail. There he is. Yeah, he'd been making a monkey out of himself for a minute there, wasn't he? There they come. There they come. Yeah, that little haircut deal you put on him, he just had to reach up and grab well, it, didn't he, Willard? When I put that haircut on there, that shortened his dinner up. <laughs> I believe that's a bass. Hold on. Don't he, let him get around the anchor rope now. He's heading that way. Oh, he's heading that way. No, that's crappy. Just a it's, nice crappie. crappie. That's the kind we're looking for. Yeah. That's a beauty right there. Look at that thing right there. Now, Willard, that's that special magic you put on there for me. Yeah. Give now, buddy, that's a fine one there. Be. That's that little little light. How much do you say out there, that weight of that little old jig is, Willard? It's uh, probably about a 30 second. 30, now, let me tell you what happened on that one. You know, that same old limb that's been hanging me and hanging me and hanging me. And it, I got him loose. And like you said, I let it drop over and I just kindly just was finessing it. Right on yeah. out here, I was on the bottom coming to the boat. And he picked it up almost straight under the boat. So You just teased him right in there. Teased it. him right in there. Well, that's pretty good doings there. I'm going to put him in this magic <laughs> live well you got up here. Man, his stomach swelled out there like he got a hamburger in it. Yeah. Now, Willard, what temperature do you think these fish bite at the best? Well, really, when they when they really get wide open, you know, like everybody likes to catch them, is, uh, I'd say between 62 and 65 degrees. All right. Now, you, are you checking that temperature on that locator there? What's well, it look it's like? 58 degrees. 58, so it's still got a little way to go, ahead. Yeah, I, I believe that's got a lot to do with the fish being as scattered as much as they are. Uh-huh. You know, we just catch two or three here and two or three there. Uh-huh. And if uh, when that uh, temperature comes up, puts those fish on the bank, then, you know, all the good fishermen get out here and catch them. Yep, I got you. In other words, about 62 is ideal, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'd that... say 62, you, you could probably be catching... Well, we're catching four or five fish here. You could probably be catching 25. Uh-huh. They're just more active, ain't they? Yeah, it just, uh, that water gets them ready to go in there and spawn. When they get ready to go in there and spawn, they're eating everything up in their way. Right, they just got to have a lot to eat, because I wonder if they eat while they're spawning, or do they shut it off? Well, I don't know about, uh, about the female, but you catch a lot of those males in one foot of water up there. Just as soon as the jig hits the water, he'll grab it. When they're on the bank? Yeah. And that'd be at 62 temperature? Yeah, I'd say between 62 and 65, somewhere in that area. Uh-huh.
He finally jumped on that thing. You knew he was in there, didn't you, Willie? Yeah. Uh oh. Huh? He's scrapper too. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, you knew he'd be in there. Did you get him off that limb you, you just look, got look hung that on? that strawberry in his mouth there, would you? <laughs> Did you get him off that uh, limb you got hung on a while ago? That one I just broke that line on. I told you, is there all I had to do is just fool him. You got him that little Malibu, Malibu white, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. That little strawberry head there. Uh-huh. See how he tore that thing up? Uh-huh. I just hung that thing, and then that next time I scratched it over, and there he was. Well, you know, uh, was you right off the edge of that yeah. ledge? Yep. You know, our anchor just slipped. We just slid back out here. Yeah. You see that little old strawberry sticking out of his yeah. mouth? Yeah, oh, you, you use a little white, little white Malibu, ain't you? Yep. All right, I may have to get in here with you. Yeah, I scratched that little old limb there, and it was just right. Uh-huh. If you just barely touch them limbs, that'll do it, won't it? He can't stand it. Now, let me ask you this about crappie fishing. That's getting toward the middle of the day. Do they slow down any time during the day, or are they better early and late? Well, this middle of the day, this is really the hard time to catch them. Is it? Is that, is that generally always true? Well, I'd say from 6 o'clock in the morning to about 10, 30, or 11, they do real well. Uh-huh. And from 11 until 2 o'clock, that's your slowest part of the day. In other words, you're just going to peck around and pick up one here and there, right? Yeah, you're not going to catch a bunch of them anywhere right now, you know, uh -huh. right, right in the middle of the day. Uh-huh. Well, you done slipped, sl uh, slipped in there and got another before I even got my line tied. Yeah, I got well, on that little old limb is again. Is that the same place? Yep. Yeah. You see that strawberry sticking out yeah. of his mouth, don't yeah, you? Give me one of them. I ain't, uh -huh. I, ain't hard to, I ain't hard to convince, Willard. Uh, you put that strawberry in front of him, he can't stand that. You told me that when it got tough, that's a good lure to use, didn't you? Yeah, when the, when the going gets tough, tough gets going. That's right. Let me see if I got another see one of these head in here. Just, e Just exactly like it, huh? I mean exactly like it. I'm going to have to go back to the box on that then. All right, well, I found your limb out there with my, with my curly tail. All right, let me see if I can find you one of these little killer jigs. Okay. I got, looks like about six in my box. Boy, them gonna be good eating too. How many you got in your box back there? It looks like I got right about 12. About 12? Yeah. You didn't whip me but two to one. Well, that ain't as bad as it was last time. No, I think you did extra good. Well, you got several nice ones out of that last hole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's gonna make good mess fish right there though, would it? You have, have something to eat right there. Look at that black, how pretty he is after he got in that water. Yes, sir. Look how black he turned. 
Now you got you got nice black ones and white ones in there. A lot of people ain't never seen them close together. Can you reach in there and let them see them side by side so they get an idea? All right, let me see if you can kind of hold hold them up side by side. All right. How about that? Now they you can see the difference real good there. See. And it ain't necessarily that one is darker than the other. It's just the way the lines are running. The black's running uh, vertically, and the white's running horizontal. Boy, them pretty things. I'm telling you now. That makes some fine eating. Ones. Yeah. Well, well, we bring that food around long. Your boss will have to run you off, will he? Yeah, I got to get to work. Okay. Well, let's go do it. Well, folks, I'm going to get the anchor rope, and uh, we're going to leave this beautiful Lake Logan Martin here for a while. And... Uh, Crappie fishing is generally good over here year round. They got good launching places like we showed you coming in. And uh, they're, uh, it's just a fine crappie lake and bass lake. We hadn't got any bass going right now, but we just want to show some of the good crappie uh, fishing. And let the good Lord bless you. And y'all stay with us again next week for some more outdoors with Archie Phillips.